Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to have you here today. We have a wonderful, wonderful speaker. I'll introduce her in a minute. Uh, for those of you who do not know what we do, we work with you on building your legacy wealth because what's important is taking care of the future, not giving up what you need today, but still building for the future. So we work with you on your commercial real estate to have it grow and grow and grow. And if you'd like to have a conversation with any of us, we're happy to have that with you. It's very simple to make an appointment. Just go through thenesteggbuilder.com and we will accommodate you. So today we have a wonderful Christina Luttrell and she runs a, a virtual assistant company and she finds out just what you need for your company so that you can simplify everything. So I have this great quote about simplifying. It says, simplify, simplify. It's from our book, Choose Happy. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Our life is frittered away by detail. Simplify, simplify. And that's David Thoreau, if you know him, and he loved to simplify. Don't agonize. Organize. Lawrence Kennedy. And the last one by Abe Lemons is the trouble with retirement is you never get a day off. So we're going to hear about what Christine does and how she could assist you through so that you can get to your retirement so you never have a day off. So <laughs> welcome, Christine. We're so glad to have you. Please. Thank you. Thank you for having me back, Peggy. I really, really um, appreciate it. And it's so true about the path of the entrepreneur. We never have a day off. And then when we retire, we're still managing what we, our portfolio, right? Because um, we don't ever let it go. So you don't have that day off. But when you're employees, you get a guaranteed amount of days off. So we have to remember that for ourselves and self-care. And, and we have to treat ourselves very, I always say, when you own a business, you're still an employee. So you have to remember you get those benefits too. And we try to set it up. Um, as Peggy introduced, I do have a virtual assistant company. I opened it in 2008 and went into that. I have a team of people that work for me. We have an implementation team. We like to have it. I have... Um, implementation specialist here in the United States. I have my personal one who is overseas and she's awesome, amazing. And we've been together for about 10 years now. It's amazing. I love her dearly. She can read my mind and she handles a lot of things for me. And then um, about 2015, I opened strategies for small businesses, which is where I focus the primary, primary excuse me, the most amount of my time and my focus. And then I work with the team as they need things and they come in. So that's kind of where we are. And with strategies for small businesses, I work with entrepreneurs to help them streamline processes and procedures, learn how to best work with a team and move forward with that because some people don't know how important the communication is. And just things like that, in addition to marketing strategies, building websites, just that part of the marketing side. But my main, I like to work one-on-one -on -one with, with business professionals and their journeys, whether they're just starting or have been in business for a while. I picked a topic specific today that has to do with AI, because that's the big buzz right now in using AI. And then so people want to have a virtual assistant, want to have AI, or as a entrepreneur, they want to use AI themselves. And they're just falling into this. Like I have one client's like, oh, I made this today. I had this book written yesterday. I did this. I did this. Everything in AI. And I'm like, wait a minute, slow down, slow down. Because you just wrote this whole thing about being this yippee a cowboy. And it's all in this voice, but you're a surfer you're not a cowboy and everybody knows you as a surfer. So you don't live on my ranch. You don't, so take away the words that I use and redo it. And 
he didn't quite understand that. He thought it would be fun, but I was trying to teach him that it was a total disconnect in personality. AI can do it, but that's not who he is. So I wanted to kind of go through some best practices, standards and practices, if you will, using AI. And a lot of this common sense, you guys will know it, we just get caught up in the new tool. Um, my biggest thing, and I hope you guys agree, is keeping it human-centered, keeping it still human-based. People are all hot on getting the AI customer support things for their website or adding the AI um, answering responses and stuff. Well, we all didn't like it when we would call for service for our cable and we got somebody overseas who was reading the book and you're like, okay, so I did this. I already restarted my modem and I did that and did this. Like, okay, thank you. I can help you. Can you please go push the button and hold it for 10 seconds? I just told you I did that. You know what I mean? There was no human part, even though there was a human because they were only allowed to read in the order that they could read. So why start setting up customer service that's going to take us back to something like that? You want to be known for something, be known for still being a heart and a human. Here, content that you're writing, your blog posts and stuff, I get it. But when it comes to working with other people, really try to keep that human feel and that human thing. People are even responding to emails with AI. This is the subject of it. And they're sending responses like, well, you don't even know what that said. Wait a minute. So keeping it human centered, I think is going to be our challenge in this great adventure with AI. There are tons of training out there and Peggy knows this. She's She's been talking about using AI and doing some of that stuff. Stick with the training and stay up because this is going to move fast and it's going to go. If Has ever, anybody touched AI yet out of the group? Look at you all are rocking it. Um, I signed up because I'm with Google with a lot of things and I, I answer and respond to a lot of things being in the business. And they had me sign up for beta AI with them before chat GPT hmm. really hit. And now I don't know if everybody has access to it because I still have the button in mine, but it says, how can I help you write this? And you click the button and you just put your prompt in, in a Google doc. And it'll go ahead and start writing it just like ChatGPT or any of those. And that's within Google, which is reading all of your stuff. If you use Gmail and all that, they kind of already are starting to know you. So it's kind of a, a cool little tool. If you write anything with AI, read it. That's the other thing is always examine it. Always check it out. I mean, it's, it's important. You have your own specific things that you do for like you might have a little thing that you say I have one that's uh, a client that says love and joy that's her signature and it's always greetings something in her email well one of the first emails I wrote for her I didn't write greetings and I didn't write love and joy and boy I got a rashing for it do you not pay attention to anything but it's like okay but you have to go back and make it you I'm just giving you the content before obviously before AI came out and you still need to do that. You still have to read it over. You still have to proof it. You still have to go through it and make sure that your little nuances is in there. Again, going back to the surfer dude that thought he was a cowboy, you want to make sure there's no disconnect because people are getting to know you. There are places you can go to to check for plagiarism. If you're going to use AI to post anything as blog posts or anything, if you're not going through and changing, 20% of what was submitted to you, run it through the plagiarism checkers because it's important. And um, I like it, like one of my notes is test, test, test. Write something, put put your prompt up, make sure you include the voice you want, how you want it, how you want it heard, like educational comedian. And as much detail as you can put into the prompt, the better ex it will execute something for you and then still go in and edit that. But do it, I say three times, get three examples. If anything, you can change the title and you have three different pieces of content that you can use 
at different times. Now, second quarter, like it was the first quarter of the year, second quarter, third quarter. I mean, you can still use the content because nobody's going to remember you wrote it in January. So if you do that, you can compare it and make sure that the stuff is coming out the way you want it. Um, there's a lot of people that I'm getting um, in this group. It's so amazing. And they're talking about utilizing it to actually write their checklists. It goes through their calendar and extracts the stuff and makes them a to-do list. And I'm like, I'm too much of a control freak. Can't do it. If I don't have my eyes on it and I'm not sure, I'm not trusting something else to do it for me. So I can't say that. Um, there's Claude as a, in addition to ChatGPT. Um, there's, it's a different kind of AI. And there was one I was actually trying to look up that I can't remember the name of it that will help write your presentations for investments and things like this. And I'm going to go back and research that and find the name of it because I'd like to give that to Peggy to give to you guys because it would be great to help put it together for what you guys do in building your nest eggs and you're looking for investors and where it's going to pull in. Again, you're going to write it, but it's going to give you some key things, maybe statistics. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I read through and I went, well, this is what I teach all the time in the plagiarism side is to always check the facts. If it says 50% of the people, blah, 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 make sure it's 50% because it could make a mistake. It could take a little word and make it different than what you had typed in. It actually will, what do you call it? Um, like read and read and things like that. I can't think of the word right now. I was, I was watching one of the animals outside. Uh, but yeah, so it could take it and then turn it just in a little bit that takes it off in a different direction. So you want to make sure your statistics, your facts, websites it might be um, recommending, that those are actually real because it it is a machine and it's not us. So fact check as much as possible. People have asked me, can you have your virtual assistant set it up in, in AI? Absolutely. That's one of the best uses for your VA is to get them writing the content for you, but you come back and you've got to approve it. It's got to have your stamp of approval on it. It needs to have your voice and stuff, but imagine the amount of time that can save for you. If you're putting, if you have a website that has a blog or you're doing podcasts or things and you need topics, suggest topics. I need topics on this. It'll give you a whole list of topic ideas. Uh, you could say, I want to write a book on, and you spell it all out. Give me what the um, table of contents would be. Boom, it's going to break down what chapters you want. Then you break down each chapter and have it write each chapter. You're reading and editing it, but now you can go and produce this book, put it up on Amazon, and now it's part of your expertise back end for your reputation. I mean, all of those things can help you, and an assistant can help gather that material. And you, as long as your prompts to the assistant is exactly what you need, they're going to go in and they can pull it out. They can check it, give it back to you, let them do the work for you. Even if they're overseas VAs, a lot of them, a lot of the companies are now really training them into this. I just don't let them write emails by AI and put them out there. I still make them send them to me and I read them and I go, nope, you now, instead of having a two paragraph thing, that just says, blah, 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 great to meet you. You now have got six paragraphs in this email, not me. I talk fast, I talk short, I get to the point and I move on. So that's the stuff that's important that you follow through. Any questions? Me, I got a few. Yes, uh, ma'am. Well, one was um, the gal that got very upset because you didn't use greetings and you didn't use whatever her byline was did she send you a process because processes in place are really important how how's anybody supposed to know what they're supposed to do unless they have something to read so do you uh, also create processes for companies yes have them? So, yes so to go back no she didn't she um let go let go of her other business manager who then withheld all of her 
passwords and everything and didn't give them to us. As a team, I had to break down. I had to hack into so many things. It was crazy. And she was sending them over by LastPass, but then you couldn't see them and you had limited access. And But the client didn't even have any of this information. And I probably spent the first three months just locating stuff for her and cleaning things up because this person wouldn't even talk to her anymore. And it was, and I was hired to only do her podcast. So it was, it was a big lesson and no, she had no processes from this person. So we put them in place. Yes, ma'am. And we have a checklist. She now has a password list that she can work with. And then we have it as a team in LastPass, which we can export for her if we needed to. But she won't, she's technically, she won't, it's not open to anything. So she just wants it on an Excel sheet, which is so dangerous. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. nope, nope. And we did start to put together a process and procedure booklet for her. One of the things that I always say, and thank you, Peggy, is put that together. And I think we might have talked about this last time too, is that create that, even if it's something you're doing every day and you have no team, you you haven't hired the teenager down the corner, you haven't brought in any family members, you're a solo premier and you only do it yourself. Absolutely. Write down the checklist you have because you know what? You're going to explode. And when you explode and you get so busy, you want to be able to hand this and say, this is what I do. And let them read it and follow the steps one, two, three, and ask you questions. And it's easier for you to do that while you're doing it. Mm-hmm. There's, um, you can uh, video yourself doing it on the screen. And, you know, so that they're getting screen prompts. And so if you're touching a website, here's where you go to log in. Here's how I do a post. Here's this. Here's the tags I use. Here's this. If it's easier for you to do that, do that. Then mm-hmm. run your video through like Otter. Otter will transcribe it. So you've got video and you've got written. You'll have to clean up the written a little bit. It, some of it is really kind of yucky. And it works really well because now you've got this processes and procedures in place and your expectations. And if you don't do that for six months, you're how do I do that again? You have it to go back to. And that's important. I always say, think of your business as if you are the corner business where you have employees that you have to interview. You have to take them through their job and how they need to do it and how they are expected to come about. Your business being at home is no different than that one out there. Thank you. What about, uh, because you're talking about AI and it's new to a lot of us, Mm -hmm. do you do a specific training on AI? I I I love to say I'm the expert of everything, but I would not train on AI because I don't have all the nuances yet and I don't like to false you know lead people into it I can tell you some of the things to do and I can show you the basic but I'm still playing with it and I'm still learning and there's so many different platforms now like I said there's Claude there's chat GBT um the plagiarism one I was just playing with a new one uh today and I'm like okay but I don't want to go out and say hey do it like this because I'm not Mm. the um the master i did start working with a group that i absolutely love and i can send you the link um they end up if you if you don't join the program they have a free side that you can stay a part of that's in a whatsapp group and man i have never belonged to a whatsapp group that is so active and so knowledge sharing and so crazy that I stayed on the free side to see what they offered so that I can, I, you know, I'm going to join in January, but I said, I want to do this so I can see what other people would get if it's even worth their time, but their training and their, the stuff you get for your 14 day free trial and then belonging to this group, highly recommend it. Highly. Mm. Can you put that in the chat? Uh, no, I'd have to look it up because oh, I, okay. I so just, if you said I just know by me. the WhatsApp, yeah, I'll definitely do that. I'll ask Dawn to put that out when she sends out the video to everyone. 
Okay. And you said uh, the website needs to have a blog in it for now. Does that so you have a blog and then you can put all your videos and you also do all your content, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So depending on what your web website focuses on and what you're doing, if like for me in marketing, of course, it's important for me to have a blog, to have information staying. Oh, there's Otter. Very good. Yep. Um, you, I, I love to have that content going and it helps build the ranking of your website because you're constantly feeding Google and Yahoo and all of those different search engines with more information. So yes, to have that. If your website is, you know, meet with me, this and that, and you don't have anything that you need to share content, you're not trying to be an expert on anything, you wouldn't have to have a blog. I like to recommend that you should, especially like um, Tyshawn, he was talking about, you know, he's building investments for this and he's looking at this new advent, you know, this new venture for him, this, that. What are some of the other successes? Because if I'm going to invest money with him, I want to see kind of who he is as a person and what he's done and what's going on. So if he has blogs about different things he's done or whatever, if I go research him and I find a website that's his, I can go, wow, he's got it all together. Look at all these different things like he's closed on or that he's doing or that he renovated or that he, you know, is all of that that he's collected. That's awesome. So I mm -hmm. would be able to use that as content, you know, and his journey that he's going through to be able to share that and then be the expert on that journey to then write that book and have people coming back going, oh my gosh, he's so successful. Check out his website. Oh, he's got this book on how to do it. You know, it's that kind of thing. It builds your reputation. That's why I said a blog. And for me, like what you're doing right now, Peggy, you're doing your video of your podcast and you guys put it up on YouTube. So I do the same thing. Then I have my assistant strip the audio from it. And she, we put that up in Libsyn. So it goes out as a podcast on a different um, platform. So we've got video on Yahoo, on Yahoo, on YouTube, the audio, the same audio. All it is, is an export the audio from the video. And if you're doing it in Zoom, you can download the straight audio. Putting that into your podcast platform. Then on my website, I have a little article about what we talk about. We've got video, audio, and written, all on the same content, all on the same thing. And I've hit all three modalities for people. And where do you post that? The I audio? post it. I do it on, on strategiesforsmallbusinesses.com. If you go under blogs, then you'll see it right there. and Or blogs and podcasts. So, but I have it out in YouTube on my YouTube channel. So I've got content going there. I've got content going to YouTube, which feeds to iHeart, Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts. It automatically goes out from there. And then I have it on my website, which is capturing Google as well. On Google. I always say Google. There's so many other search engines, but. My husband says that I, I'm having an affair with Google. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like them. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Christine? You know, what are you, what are your, what do you, do you have AI, uh, not AIs, do you have virtual assistants and how are you using them? And then um, if you don't, do you have a need and, or do you, Think about could a virtual assistant do this or how is a virtual assistant really going to help simplify your life running your business? So Cliff. Hey, um, I've used chat GPT three and 3.5 and I believe four is a paid option. Um, I haven't really used that before. There's a lot of other AI tools that are out there today. What do I pick? What's the best one to start with? And, and when I use it, uh, I, I literally don't even know how to use it. I mean, I can ask it basic questions, but I know that I'm just scratching the the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that can be done with it. 
I had somebody actually sit down with me and show me some things that could be done with it. I'm like, I'll never remember how you did this. So how do I educate myself better for how to actually learn how to use the right AI tool? It, it's hard because like you said, it's, there's so many out there right now and they're coming here and here and here. And, and that's why I like this group because they're so active and they're talking about it, which they're, I'm learning all the time. And basically it's really finding mentors that you trust that are out there, you know, like we were talking about Tony Robbins or, or, you know, those that are now starting to talk about AI. What do they say? Because they're going to have to vet it, right? They're really going to have to have a lot of people. Um, this, I know that the Claude, and it's like the name, the man's name, Claude, they're talking about, you know, build out processes and procedures. And one of the guys that I had met with said, oh yeah, anything legal, I run through blah, 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 AI. And they write my legal diet. And I'm like, oh, heck no, you know, because I don't know enough about legal to make sure that the papers are covering my behind. So that kind of scares me, but it's thing. I mean, I'm like you, I'm using, I use the free chat GPT. I, I will use the Google um, AI. There was another one that I used the other day and it was an, I want to say an off brand. It's one that nobody talks about and I tried it and it was okay. It felt a little clunky, but they're all the same. You put in the prompt and it just goes. So I have a client that is using a paid version of chat GPT. He's doing awesome and he loves it. And it's taken a lot of weight off of his shoulders and stuff. But then he's running everything through us and we're, we're going through, like, I hated the titles he was coming up with. And I said, but you're missing the key point of what you do. And he's like, oh, but I like that. I said, that title isn't you. You know, it's, you're missing that it's scripts for network marketers. Like that's what everybody wants. So I, you know, you just have to stay true to who you are. They're all basically going to be the same. So I, okay. I suggest stay with the, the free one. I will get Peggy the, the name of this group. And like I said, you guys can sign up for the free 14 day. And it does say who sent you. There's no affiliate stuff at with it at all. They're not doing any affiliate programs. They just want to know who's talking about it um, mm -hmm. because they're really training hard on it. But they're oh, they're amazing, and they'll answer questions like crazy. But the WhatsApp is that's just a WhatsApp where everybody joins, right? There's not a fee for it. No, so they have they have a group you go to and you you register for 14 days, and they give you a call. And literally, this was the most professional mm -hmm. thing. I said, dude, I'm so taking this from you. Because I registered and it says right in there, we want to meet with you. And this is absolutely not a sales call, not a sales call. We, we want to know your business so that we can be ready to answer your questions. Now, of course, they're just launching this portion of the business. Mm. And it literally was the best. It wasn't an application I filled out. It wasn't 20 questions I answered. It wasn't. It was a one on one with one of the owners. And he sat down and answered a couple of my questions. I had the sales call after my 14 days. They asked me, did I want to join? I said, you know what? I want to try the free thing so I can recommend it to people for them to get started. I'll talk to you in January. They said, great, we'll see you in January. No hard sell. And I stay in the free WhatsApp group. I don't have access to the training anymore that I had online. That was the 14 days but I have access to this group. And then when you get to a paid one, you get a more in-depth group, you know, but. And you get the training. Right. Access to the training and you can go back to the history of all the trainings and stuff. So it's, it was a really, it was one of the best training things. Sorry, my three-year-old just got home. So my husband's at the window, <laughs> but uh so that so that's what I would recommend, Cliff. I would I'm gonna get that for you guys because it's a good way to vet out. And like I said, I've that I can absolutely recommend. Thank you. And Ted. Oh. 
got to unmute here. I'll share a couple of experiences I've had with with chat GPT um, mostly. Um, and I've used it mostly for fun so far. One of the things that has amused me is if I ask it how to use if I ask chat GPT how to use itself, it will answer the questions. Mm. And one of the things that it told me, which answered a question that I kind of kind of puzzled me for a minute was, you know, how big an answer can or how many how many uh, how many words can the uh, can chat GPT generate? And it said four thousand and ninety six tokens. A token may be a word or a connected phrase or a, or a punctuation mark. So roughly 4,000 words is what you get out of it uh, at, at one time. I asked it to to write a, a 5,000 word paper for me, and it said it was that was beyond its capability. Okay. That was the reason why I wound up asking the question. Another fun thing I asked: uh, Does anybody on this? Is anybody on this group? Let's say heard my uh, kind of rhetorical question about how many snows we're going to have in the winter. You didn't have an I, answer. I live in Chicago, and it does snow here. It may not snow in California, but it snows in Chicago. And the old wives' tale is that you get as many snows in the winter as the day of the month on which the first snow falls. This year, our first snow of about an inch fell on Halloween, which was October 31st. So if you're in the snow plowing business, you should be really happy. I or would say anticipating a good year around here. So anyway, I asked uh, ChatGPT if if they knew about the the old wives' tale. First of all, I asked it how did, how many snows are they going to be in the winter to see how they'd respond, and they gave me a meteorological strategy, you know, page long answer for the thing. And I, so I said, uh, Do you know about the old wives' tale that said? you know, that uh, tells you how many snows there'll be in the winter. And it gave me roughly the equivalent answer as the, as the first one. So I said, don't you have a sense of humor? And ChatGPT responded, I'm a machine. I don't have a sense of humor. Oh, interesting. <laughs> but that's like anyway. when Alexa came out and we would say, Alexa, tell me, like we would, like my husband, tell me a dirty joke. And it would say something like, what happened to something that went through the mud? And I said, see, <laughs> I told you, like, so it's, it, you know, the, the Alexa was really kind of one of our first AIs, but nobody wants to like go back and recognize it because she would answer you on stuff like that. And it was always listening. <laughs> oh, yes. Still. So be careful what you leave open on your phone. Some, oh. of, some of those, some of those apps are always listening. Yeah. Anyway, one other qu quickie question for you, Christina. Yes. Sir. How would you how would you describe your your business in terms of of the the odd couple? My business. Your business. In terms of the odd couple. You familiar with the TV oh, show? Oh yes, movie? I am. Yeah. So my mind is organized, clear, and ready to go at any time with whatever you need ready to talk, ready to go. Though my desk is a mound of papers, you cannot see the bottom of it. I guess what I would kind of hope is that businesses like yours might describe their clients as Oscar and themselves as Felix. I, I would hear that, but I never label my clients because that each one is different. I can only label me. And they're, yeah. they're, they're, some of my clients, like the gentleman on the chat and another gal that I have, they are some of the most amazing marketers and we get to mm -hmm. banter back and forth. And then there's other ones that like are technically like, she sends me an email and says, well, I don't know what to do with this. I'm like, hit reply, you know? So I go, it's so vastly different. I only say in terms of me and my business is me. So that's sorry. That's really great.
<laughs> oh, that's very fun. Does anyone else have any comments or questions for Christina? Christine, I'm sorry. No, it is an app. Oh, it is. Oh, well, I've been saying it wrong all this time. So anyone have anything for Christina? What about with your business and questions about how to simplify it in some way or another? Or have you been thinking about what kind of people you could have assist you? Or we've been talking about the AI. So that brings up a question like um, your people that you do have that are available are they getting real training on AI so that they are better equipped to support? Not yet. Nope. They're just jumping in and using it. And that's why I'm working so hard at trying to learn the back end and the ins and outs so I can, because they're like, they're entrepreneurs, like any you know, shi shiny bright object, go touch it. And I, I encourage everybody to touch, but I also encourage you to, to know. And I do have one question for all of you guys, and you might have it. And Patricia, I, I see your hand up one second. Um, we're at the end of 2023. Do you have your goal for 2024? You bet because you once did. you have your goal in place, that's when we that's when I would love to help you to see here's where your goal is. If you clip, that totally surprises me out of everybody. Um, but to put that down and have it you know, going because everything you want to do moving forward needs to support that goal. Otherwise mm -hmm. you're off into la la land and you're not achieving your goal. That doesn't mean you don't adapt your goal in March because you're like, Oh, I can add this to it, but make sure you have your goal and everything is touched to it. And that's what I love to help entrepreneurs with. You have your goal in place. What can we put to support that? happening or let me see what you're doing or let's talk about it and I can go you know this is a little off track or that's a little off track so and here you are straight on on this one and I would love to help you thank you Patricia yeah so we're talking about AI or we're talking about bringing on assistance here yeah all of it both okay I didn't actually see the email. I just have, you know, the, the, the registration right. link in my, on my calendar. So I just go there and I come here and I'm like, good. Oh, what are we talking about today? That's right. Great. So, we love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some pretty big goals for this year. And I know that it means that I'm going to have to not do everything. What are. Wait, cancel, what are cancel, cancel, yeah. cancel. Right, okay, right, right, can't. right. Well, I've, I've operated from the point of not having financial resources. I'm not going to use other terms, <laughs> which means I have to end up, I've ended up doing stuff myself instead of being able to hand it off to someone. This year is different. This year I'm handing stuff off. Where do I start? What do I start? What do I hand off first that will that will support my revenue goals so then I can do more of the handing off stuff? Does that make sense? Yes, it absolutely does. So where I would tell you to start is evaluate. You need to sit down and it, it's kind of a pain in the butt because if you're like me, you know your day and you go and you're working on autopilot, okay? In order to be able to find out where you are spending the most time that is not the most efficient for you to be spending that you could have somebody else do, you have to accommodate for where you are spending your time. Because again, on autopilot, we're checking email, we're doing this, we're answering the phone. I had three tasks to do today. And it is now at my house, 442. I have done one and I still have two to do. and you know, it, and I'm like sitting back going, oh my goodness, where did the time go? Now, mind you, I did have to at 530 go find nine cows that got loose in our neighborhood <laughs> and get them to follow me back home with buckets of food. Yeah. But uh, that's not a typical business day. You know? <laughs> I've really, been there. Exactly. So for me, I, 
I have to start taking inventory. How much time do I spend on the farm? Whether it's playing with the animals, feeding the animals, fixing the animals, doing any of that. Because that's got to be in my day. And then how long am I taking checking emails? How long, you know, am I allowing for calls to just spur at the moment? People call me and I'm accessible 100% of the time. Um, and you have to start evaluating that. When I got a second VA, the first thing I made her do is go through my inbox and anything that was like a client, she had my list of clients, she was to make a label. So let's say Peggy was a client. It would be Peggy Beauregard and she would file all of Peggy's emails into there. And she went through and cleaned out my inbox. And every day I wanted it empty. When I needed to, when I had on my calendar, because your next step is calendaring everything. For me, it was clients. So at this time block, I worked on client A. This time block, client B. I didn't let client A go into client B time anymore. And then I built, and then billing. I had to bill properly because I wasn't doing that either. So that allowed me to go, okay, click the Peggy, you know, email folder. All of those deal with her during that time. My timer would go off. I would close it and we would move on. I could update my VA, ask her what she knew. But her main, that one VA main thing was keeping up with emails, getting rid of my spam or putting what she thought was spam in a different folder that wasn't my client. And that way I could focus on just what was important. So really it's like, where are you losing your time? You know, mine was getting sidetracked by everybody and I had to really compartmentalize and calendar everything. Then you can say, that's that's an easy job to hand off to somebody, you know, to train them quick. And if it's setting up appointments, following up with appointments, things like that, you can do that as well. I mean, have set, hand that over to them. You might think about having, setting up a call with, with uh, Christina about yeah. what yeah, works, like what, do what doesn't work, who would be the best like that. Yeah. I did put in our chat um, a link that takes you to my calendar. And I always promise Peggy, you know, if your people want to set up a time to chit chat, I'll give them a 30 minute block, 40 minute block. Just go into the link and let me know because I'm a servant at heart and this is what I do. And I would be happy to chat with you guys. It's and She has been very helpful to us many times. I can tell you she's brilliant. Oh, thank she you. is brilliant. So she makes herself available. I suggest you have a chat with her. Really? Yeah. Again, we'll simplify that. your thank life. You. Hire somebody to do the crap for you. <laughs> I also... You know, I'm, I'm starting what will probably be two different businesses this year. You know, one's an info business. One, I, I know I'm going to be investing in real estate myself, and I have no idea what that's going to look like. You know, you say, I'm going to do this, and then you find other interesting things to do, too. And so I know that I'm going to have to offload stuff because yeah. I've been doing stuff that I know is not good use of my time. I'm artistic. I love art. I've, you know, I have some skills in digital art, for example, but if you want it to look good, you know, you have somebody that actually knows what they're doing, do it. <laughs> David, I knew you were going to ask a question. Patrice, just real quick. I have a, I have a sheet that I created. You can do this real easily. And it's, it's in 15 minute, you could do it in 30 minute or 20 minute, whatever, for the whole day, starting at whatever day time your start day starts and 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 write I write down how I use that time. And then I looked at it and then I had a did I make money? Was that could somebody else have done this? And that really is helpful for you really looking at how what you're doing in your business. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. I, I also David. prescribed, I did a long time monetize Monday. Like everybody wants to do motivation Monday in realistic. We're out to make money. We're entrepreneurs. Yeah. So the monetize Monday meant anything that was revenue generating that you had to do on your task list started on Monday, because that gives you five days to get that completed. 
if you had to carry it over. Tackle It Tuesday was now focusing and making sure you've completed the stuff you needed to for your Monetize Wednesday or Tuesday. Work It Wednesday ended up going through and working through any things that you had to follow up or whatever. Thriving Thursday was, that's it, man. You should be thriving. You should be going. That should be done. And then we had Finish It Friday. And I did this with my team. If you finished your checklist and that stuff was done, and I, I subscribe to this as well. If my stuff got done Monday through Thursday, I was off Friday. Clients and all, don't call me, don't bug me. I finished it. And that was Finish It Friday. And that's how I looked at it and blocked my week. And, you know, I got feedback and, and I would say pushback. Monetize Monday, you're all, I'm the last person about money. I don't even build, I have not billed my clients yet for last month's services. I am the last, I'm the worst about, you know, focusing on that. But Monetize Monday made me say, okay, this is revenue generating. I need to get this started, like invoicing so that I get paid. And that's how, so that might help you too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. David? Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Peggy. Hi, everybody. Um, hey. I kind of came in late. Um, I, I kind of are starting to look into uh, AI. I'm just curious how you, uh, maybe some of your strategies or what do you know about automating AI that can help you in your business to utilize it as, a, as a, an assistance and so forth? I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. I was taught, I don't know if you were here at that time when I was talking about this group and by the way I found the link and I put it in our chat. Oh great. Um, it's uh R O A I mastermind.com and they have forward slash free trial that it redirects to and that's a 14 day free trial. So David with that group there's a lot of people and I have not used it yet that are actually using it. And we we did talk it pulls it out of your calendar and makes, you know, gives you a, a to-do list. It'll prioritize things by how you how you train it, how you talk to it. I haven't gotten that far because I'm a control freak and I I just don't trust it. I will use it to write content um, and then review it. But I personally have not. Um, this group that I'm putting in there right now, I was letting everybody know. It's 14 days free trial and it's not a hard sell. If you can't do it, they, they say fine. And you stay in the free WhatsApp group that they're sharing ideas and answering questions amongst the group. And the owner is still in there as well. And he'll pop in and he'll do a quick zoom or something. It's really a great program. And that's probably where you should start. Uh, to and get involved with those people because they're hardcore using AI and I'm still just touching it. I'm more trying to teach people to make sure you're keeping it human when you're using it outside of your own personal stuff. Thank that you. Question. Thank you, David. Um, you know any other? Um, sorry. Um, maybe some uh, Facebook groups um, for for AI. You know things mm -hmm. like this as well. I've, I've really, I've looked at Facebook groups and stuff, and I'm really having fun in the WhatsApp group versus any of the Facebook groups I'm that I've tired. gotten into. And I, it's mainly, be, and which is odd for me because I didn't know that I would care about using WhatsApp so much, but it's almost as if they're talking to you really quick and it's easy and fast and right there as opposed to going into Facebook, finding the group, going to the group looking through all the it just as turned out to be a much better use of my time using that as opposed to Facebook groups. Thank you. Ted, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, more, more of a comment in the circumstances. In my experiences with AI uh, sort of reinforce uh, what I what I tell people with a, with a you know, kind of a fun story that we don't really have time for at the moment, probably, but the, the, the summary su suggestion with respect to that little joke story I use is if you will, if you always ask the wrong question, it's very difficult to get the right answer. And there are an awful lot of us that just have never learned how to write that who have never learned how to ask the right questions. 
Well, so, maybe you could uh, ask uh, AI what the right question is to ask. <laughs> you might, you might That's actually good. do that. I'm actually going to try that story that now that now that uh, we've thought about this thing. I may, I may ask ChatGPT and see if, see if it has any sense of humor at all. <laughs> well, report back. All right, Eugene, do you have any questions or comments or thoughts about this or something for Christina? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, before I give my thoughts a little bit on my, 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 my background. So I worked in a defense industry for, for years with the Boeing company, uh, in R and D, um, AI is new to the consumer world. It's not new on the defense side. Mm -mm. Right. Um, and, uh, so we were using AI. Most of the things we're using AI for, I can't really, really talk about, but I am not a first adapter of technology. <laughs> After be, you know, being in the technology development world, I am not a first adapter. <laughs> uh, and so with regards to AI and what people are coming out with now, um, we'll use chat GPT um, because it's neat you know, for writing blogs and things like that. And I fully agree because I don't, I don't even trust the people who write stuff for our company that they just to automatically send out. Um, so we just started using chat, chat GPT because it writes it fast. Right. Um, which is, which is cool, which is faster than me writing it. Uh, but then we never use it exactly as it is. We always modify it. Um, I've never thought about, and I'm glad I came on this. I never thought about going, going ahead and using the, uh, the thing to check if it's, if it's copyrighted. Uh, I never thought about that. So I'll probably start using that, but I just, I just want to folk. I just think if folks should be cautious because everything that's coming out now for consumers, it's first generation and, uh, first generation stuff is usually the stuff that falls by the wayside. And it's the second and third generation. It actually uh, turns out to be turns out to be real good. So, uh, so I'm not. I'm just not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a first adapter with regards to uh, with regards to technology. I do have a question. I do use virtual. We do use virtual assistants a lot. Um, well, Fiverr. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. I've got people. I've got people on Fiverr working on a couple of projects for me, and I just look at the value of my time, and you know, I'm worth a thousand dollars an hour. I'll pay them 10. So, uh, um, but that's, that's Fiverr. Uh, I haven't used any VA stateside though. Um, I'm anxious to find a, a VA stateside that is uh, cost effective for me to use in my business. Oh, cost effective. Well, check with Christine. With Christine. I, I would say if you're looking stateside, a virtual assistant, you will one that's going to be a little more proactive, you're going to probably pay no less than 25 an hour. Right. And then depending on what their specialty is and how much time you need and this and that, it goes up and up and up. As when I come in as a business manager and it's me with my implementation team behind me, I can go 75 because I run Infusionsoft. I run different marketing programs and stuff. Then if I go into the strategies for small businesses and you want me to be writing your marketing or building out full funnels, then it will be, it will be different. You know, it'll go up based on what that project is. But as far as like an office assistant is what I would say, you're probably going to be looking at around 25 an hour mm -hmm. and, and you spell out your expectations, let them know that you expect them to be responsible for. And as much as you teach, treat them as a member, like one of the most brilliant people was Sir Branson, uh, Richard Branson, right? Uh, when he was coming out with Virgin, when before Virgin Airlines or anything, he had weekly meetings with his entire team and they would sit back and they would brainstorm. And he would say, Wow, Cliff, that's a great idea. Why don't you go put that in? Peggy, you wanted to do this. Yay! How can we? How can we all get behind this? 
they he brought them all in, which then built Virgin Records. But he listened to his team members. They became, they invested in it because they were heard. They were felt to be important. They were appreciated. They were all of that. A virtual assistant is no different. Mm -hmm. I have exactly. I have clients that treat me like poop. I fire them. I have I have a client I've been with for about 16 years now. And he just called me and he goes, hey, we're going back on the road. We're leaving February. Here's the dates. I'll send you your plane tickets because he speaks um, all over. And when I told him one time, we had, I said, hey, it's our 10th anniversary. We were in another state. And he's like, calls me up when we're all done. And he's like, okay, be dressed. Meet me downstairs. I got a car picking us up. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, we're celebrating our 10th anniversary. You know, I mean, his That's wife's great. cracking up about it. His family, I, we love okay. you. We, we are family. And so but treat Christine, your pay that way. We're at the top of the hour. We have two more Sorry. questions. Sorry. So Cliff and Nika, can you make them quick? Yeah, please? just real quick. Um, what was the information to connect with that WhatsApp uh, group again? It's in the, uh, it's in it's the, chat, the chat and we'll email it out to everybody. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Nika? Uh, my, my question was quick too. I just, um, and it uh, reminded me when Eugene said it, where was the specifically checking to make sure that it's not plagiarism? There's a guess couple. That, when I mentioned this to my son, he was like, you know, because the schools are very crazy about it. They're like, they're telling him, don't even think about trying to use it because we'll know you're plagiarism. <laughs> They don't even want them to, to like use it to school. Yeah. So, and kids are, they've been using, you know, they've been taking content off websites and the teachers actually have places where they run it through for plagiarism for years. And that's how, you know, especially college papers. I don't have those websites. I did check one today. I didn't like it. It was clunky. Um, I was word something. I'll look at it again, but definitely like that's something I'll ask the group I'm in and I'll get it back to, okay. to Peggy. Right. Yeah. Cause I just want to, in case, I mean, especially once it gets into high school and if I'm helping him or whatever, it would be nice. I mean, he's actually a better writer than me. And he's only 13. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, one comment. I'm a, my wife and yeah. I are moderate. My, my, my wife and I are moderators on uh, bigger pockets. Uh, and the moderators are now starting to look for technology to see if people are answering questions using AI because we don't like it. We want answers about investments and things like that coming from people. And we just started to note a lot of the answers we're starting to notice from Bigger Pocket, which is an investment website. They look like the AI generated websites. And, uh, and so we're looking at is a technology that we can deploy to actually know if it's an AI generated answer. Mm. Well, yeah, we're gonna wanna know that. Yeah. So we are at the top of the hour. I thank all of you for being such curious people and having some great questions for Christina. And Christina, thank you so very much for coming on and your special gifts and allowing our participants to sign up with you to get a um, to get some time with you to see what what works best for them so i thank you very much and we'd love to have you come back again thank you i would love it